art can be a chaotic subject to teach, and many teachers opt for a safe activity such as pencil drawing to keep clearing up to a minimum. Art coordinator Peter Sanders shows how, with the right approach, teaching art can be adventurous and ambitious without the mess. The value of messy art is giving children experiences that often they won't have. Most lessons are about containment and neatness, things being reined in. There's very little work done in schools which is tactile, and I think messy art, well, for a start, you don't know what's going to happen. And when it does happen, there are surprises, and I think those surprises are... Uh, I think the kids like them. I think they value them and they appreciate them. Today, Peter Team teaches a Year 1 lesson on the subject of light and dark using charcoal and chalk, which he has planned with class teacher Sharon Owen. I think most children love art as a lesson and it is a time for them to be more creative. Really, it's excitement that makes it messy. They want to play. That's what children do, really, isn't it? And that playing and practising is an important part of learning how to use art materials. I don't feel very confident in my capabilities of doing it at all, which I do find very challenging as a teacher. I'm glad to have somebody in today who's more expert on it. I think it's about bringing that wow factor into lessons, really, that really makes it memorable for the children, and they're more engaged with what's going on. I think there's very little training in the teaching of art, so not having tried it out, I think a lot of teachers are quite concerned about moving towards anything that is messier than a pencil. Close observational drawing rules, really, and there's not much else in some places. I think a lot of the time you can feel like you're putting in all this effort into getting out all these materials and then the children do sometimes just to make a mess with them and it just seems that you've wasted your time, really. When I was thinking about the planning, I was worried about what she would feel was appropriate. I was really pleased about her willingness to go along with it and not say, oh, that's a no-no, but say, yeah, let's, let's try that. Something that Sharon said, which I think is really important with little children, is not giving them too many bits of information and not asking them to do too many things at one time. I think you do need to keep the learning objective very, very simple. And um, for, I, for me, the learning objective was for them to show the effect that light has on an object. And we said, well, what are they familiar with? And Sharon mentioned that light and dark had been their, their science topic, so we thought we'd go from there. Because we really wanted them to think about the effect that light has on things, it did seem really important to make the room as dark as we possibly could for at least some part of the lesson. We want to change the atmosphere in the classroom completely. We'll see how dark we can get it, because it is the sunniest day so far this year. They're always talking about awe and wonder <laughs> and how we're supposed to get that into our curriculum. And I think that it doesn't happen very often. I don't think we change our environment very often. We say it's good, but it doesn't happen. We're going to set up little islands of light and some of them will be lit by candles and others will be lit by these small angle poise lamps. So that when the children come in, they can see there's a very specific area of focus. We're putting the sand around so that the candles are less likely to fall over if anyone just knocks into the table. It'll help us as support for them. We've split them into three different groups of eight so that all the children will be looking at different groups of objects from different angles so that we'll get different effects of light hitting the objects. So hopefully all the pictures on the table shouldn't end up looking the same. We've got building blocks, teddy bears. We've got a duck with an egg, and they're very different in texture, so that should present them with an interesting problem, really. And we're hoping that the strength of light from one side will give a very different impression of tone from the shadow created on the other side. We're using charcoal and chalk, very simply, black and white, so that the children don't get confused by choice, because all we're looking at today is light and dark. And so we got light and dark. <laughs> we made a, a limited amount of resources available. So each child was given a pot with one piece of charcoal and one piece of chalk. Which one it was, but... We talked about emphasising with the children the need for when they're not using charcoal to put it back in the pot so that it doesn't go on the floor. We decided we used newspaper frames 
around the children's work to keep the edges of their work as clear as possible. We did an awful lot of getting ready beforehand. And if you don't get ready beforehand, you're going to have real problems. We're using the beige paper so that they can see where they put the white marks, because we're only using black and white. The materials themselves are not very exciting to look at, but what I think will be exciting is the way that the lesson is introduced. And that is giving a really clear physical example of what light and dark is. Who can tell me either a source of light or something they've learned about light and dark in science? Sun. The sun and the sun is our We wanted life. something that would help get the children focused and motivated. And we talked about an image that would really grab their attention, which is when we came up with the air pump by Joseph Wright. I think it's a really good picture. A couple of seconds to look at it. We looked at the painting up on the whiteboard, which was just a brilliant example, really, of how you can use light in a painting. And it was very clear for the children to then be able to come and point out where it was bright and why it was bright, and then look at where it was dark and recognise why it was dark. Um, Morgan. And the minute it was up there, the children's interest was captured. One thing that Sharon did was turned it into a black and white image. She just took the colour out so all you saw was the light and the dark. <laughs> As soon as she did that, all of the children were really shocked. Whoa, look, look, look what's happened. So once we'd got across that idea of light having an effect on what you can see, then Peter modelled the activities that they were going to be doing at the tables. If this happens, it's not a problem. So I wanted to get across a few things there. First of all, it's really cheap, and actually snapping it was not an issue. So it doesn't fall on the floor. Then asking them to find out the different ways in which that material would work and chiefly that they could apply massive pressure and that that was all right because children are often very tentative and they think of charcoal as being a bit like a pencil whereas it has a very different job. And what we were talking about was charcoal being a medium for getting light and dark. I don't think we ever mentioned line. By putting some light behind it, it's making our man look as though the light's on behind him. Then they went into the activity. The magic of it would be when we turned off the lights and what was normally a very bright classroom became a very dark place. I think that change too, then having the small lights around the room had a massive impact on their understanding of what they were doing. A lot of them started straight away using materials and not actually ever looking at what it was that was our still life on each table. So most of the time I was asking them to look again and really look. Don't forget to put anything you're not using back into the pot. And a duck. Can you see the duck? Yes. Yeah, you can see the duck. Is he in the light? Right, we haven't got any orange, have we? So it's either light or it's dark. With that aged child, it's a really good thing to have the paper anchored. And so I actually had a, a roll of masking tape and just taping down the edge again. Right, and what's this here? What's this? Avoiding mess is seeing things before they really get seriously troublesome. The sponges were very, very slightly damp. Actually, they were ideal for cleaning hands. It's like developing a photograph. You slowly see something emerging, and these children were... You can see the duck now, because I put black around it, and it, it's coming forwards. I think they were really engaged. That's great, and it's really making the black stand out, isn't it? We could talk about if they'd made something really light, about how it wasn't really light and then suddenly dark, that there was some kind of fading out going on and that the further away you got from the light source as well, the darker it became. It's dark there and it's darker and getting lighter as it moves towards the board. Do you think you can show that? But have a look at that picture over there. Look at the picture there. Can you see the light? No, look at those people. Look at them. They just look like twins. Oh, I see what you mean. They look like twins, the pictures. I would spot things that I wanted to talk about later. Things like where somebody had really achieved contrast or where they had filled the page. 
or where actually they'd started to mix the light and the dark. Have a look, though. I finished. And so don't forget to put your names on your work. Towards the end, there's that tendency for children to, to get up and want to show you what they've done. Now, that's deadly with paint, and it's really quite bad with charcoal. But Sharon did that thing. I don't think I've told anybody to stand up. And so they sat down again, and that's critical before any clearing up goes on. So wipe your hands and then pass the sponge up. Just pull it. That's the way. Once that activity was ended, it was really important to let them know that was the end of it and make sure that everybody had put everything back into the pots. Leaving a few children to help do certain jobs, not the messy jobs. Pick one that you can see up there that you think has really effectively shown what effect light has. I think they all achieved something. I think some achieved a massive amount. I think some were really great. I was f shocked, actually, at how good some of them were. You can see it in the dark because it's got the shading around it. As the lesson started, I was quite worried that the end result wouldn't have anything to do with light or dark, but actually they got the hang of it. There was a massive range of understanding of the task in hand. What is the black ground in? What is all of that black? The shadow. The shadow. And why is the bear white? It's because it was in the light. How many teddy bears are in that picture? One. The learning elements, they happen by accident sometimes. They're things that you can draw children's attention to once they've been done. It looks to me like there might be another one in the shadow. Point to that one. There's a kind of a, a shadow of a bear or an, a ghost of a bear. And uh, I think it may have been a mistake, <laughs> but lots of art is a mistake. Where was the light? Was it in front of the blocks or behind the blocks? Behind. It's probably the most successful illustration of the dark silhouette of the, of the building blocks being pushed forward by that light. A duck, an egg and two bottles of paint. She's really gone for it with the, with the dark here. There's not, there's not another piece of work there that has shown how, how solid you can make charcoal. This one was in the light and that one in the dark. She was able to articulate that this teddy was nearer to the light, this teddy was further back, but you could see bits of this teddy. The work that it took to get it organised was was more than I would normally do, but actually I think it was well worth it. And it's worth putting in an extra 20 minutes preparing to get something that's really productive and isn't actually messy. There was no mess, really, at the, at the end of the lesson from something that could have been. So, yes, I would definitely be a more ambitious art teacher from now on. I think, as with any art work, it can't be one-off. It's got to be that this is a lesson that leads into another lesson that leads into another one, so that the teacher can start the lesson with, do you remember when we did that? We do it with everything else, you know, in, within science. Do you remember we looked at light sources? Can you think of another one? And that would be seen as natural. But I think art is quite often seen as, I've done that, and that was quite hard work and quite a lot of effort, so I think I'll, I'll leave it for a while. Why do you like charcoal? Because it makes it fun and it makes my hands messy. I've never had my hands messy before and it's a bit fun. <laughs>